Would you prefer working like this or this? As a programmer who works 16 to 18 hour days, the last thing you want is your eyes giving up on you especially when you're just a few lines away from the finish line. And since you spend longer staring at your screen than your girlfriend, if you even have a girlfriend, you might as well buy a good one. This is the BenQ GW2790 QT Pi that they said is designed especially for programmers. So I decided to kidnap a couple of my programmer cousins to give their honest feedback on the monitor. In fact, I wanted to let them speak for themselves, but they were a little too shy. Anyways, let's just get started. This monitor was sent over by BenQ for this review, but as usual, we reserve our right to an unbiased opinion. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, as well as check out the links in the description because when was the last time manufacturers actually give you guys enough credit for your work to design something especially for you? Ah. So apparently, according to my programmer cousins, when choosing a monitor, there are three main things that programmers care about. Number one is a good display. Now, programmers spend long hours looking at the screen, so a comfortable viewing experience is important to prevent eye fatigue. In order to stay comfortable during longer coding sessions, sitting one and a half to two feet uh, from their screens would be ideal. It's also maybe because of our collective Asian childhood traumas. <laughs> so a monitor's resolution needs to be high enough specifically for them to read lines of codes clearly without having to lean in or squint. Don't you dare. This 27 inch GW2790 QT monitor has a resolution of 1440p, which gives us a pixel density of 108 ppi, so it's pretty good. It also has an IPS panel with a wide viewing angle, so you can still see clearly if you are switching up positions. Refresh rate is less important for programmers, but you still get 75 hertz for them longer procrastinating sessions. According to programmer cousin number one, most programmers like to work in dark mode in a dark room, like Batman fighting crime one line of code at a time in different shades of colors or white on a black background. As IPS panels tend to have a lower contrast, they normally have to crank up the brightness of their monitors to make things more legible. BenQ's coding mode basically bumps up contrast and saturation without adjusting screen brightness, which my programmer cousin said made quite a big difference. They find that it makes distinguishing different parts of codes or syntax highlights easier, especially when your brain is on autopilot. I mean, you can always adjust your monitor settings manually every time you want to switch from work to play like an uncle, but you do you. I also asked them to try out BenQ's Brightness Intelligence Gen 2, which adjusts screen brightness according to the user's ambient lighting. Yes, I'm aware that programmers are cave dwellers, but sometimes you get a stray human being stumbling into your room and opening the blinds because some sun will do you good. With Brightness Intelligence, you can proceed to ignore them and continue your work without skipping a beat. Also, did you know that Computer Vision Syndrome CVS is almost a guarantee for programmers? I mean, 80 to 90 hours a week staring at your screen can definitely wreck your eyes, causing eye fatigue, itchiness, dryness. According to findings from a research that was published in the Journal of Medical Imaging Bellingham a few years back, filtering out blue light significantly reduced symptoms of CVS in test subjects. Of course, they were testing out blue light filtering lenses and BenQ's iCareU Blue Light Filter Plus is more of an in-monitor solution, but after testing it out for a couple of weeks, I was glad to rid programmer cousin number two of his nerdy blue light filtering glasses and get him one step closer of giving his mother a grandson. For the record, she absolutely did not bribe me for this. Number two, we have ergonomics. So programmers can suffer from a condition known as computer neck and back syndrome, where their bodies get sore and stiff after sitting for hours. In order to mitigate that, they need to move around more and their monitors need to switch positions to keep up. Having a monitor stand like this that tilts, swivels and height adjusts is pretty handy. Also, depending on the type of work that they do, being able to switch between landscape and portrait modes could be very crucial. For instance, if you're working with Java, which has longer syntaxes, you might want more horizontal screen space, but uh, if you're working with Python that tends to have shorter lines of code, working in portrait mode allows you to read more lines of code. Uh, this allows you to say spot an error in line 5 when you're already working on line 20 without scrolling. However, ultimately it still depends on how you abstract or organize your codes, but having the flexibility is definitely good. 
Number three, we have multiple connectivity options. So some programmers work with multiple devices. For instance, they might have a desktop at home, but have to work with a work laptop that can sometimes be encrypted. So being able to switch between uh, different inputs quickly is quite handy. For those who appreciate a cleaner setup, having a USB-C port that both displays and charges your laptop, as well as provide you with more USB ports is always highly appreciated. You can even daisy chain another monitor for a dual monitor setup if you decide to hashtag Boster Beli Dua. This monitor comes with three USB 3.2 ports, a one DisplayPort 1.2 and one HDMI 1.4 port. That's plenty. Though programmer cousin number one, who is more tech savvy, can't help but to notice that ancient HDMI 1.4 standard. Hmm. Oh yeah, as a bonus, this monitor also comes with noise filter speakers along with a mic that also has noise cancellation features for calls and whatnot. Here's how the mic sounds like. So this is how the microphone sounds like without noise cancellation and with noise cancellation. Can you hear the difference? Hello, noise cancellation and hello, hello, hello without noise cancellation. Next, we'll do a quick sound test on the quality of the microphone. Just dancing with my eyes closed Cause everywhere I look I still see you And time is moving so slow And I don't know what else that I can do So I'll keep dancing with my... For all y'all fellow nerds and geeks, here are the specs to this monitor. To recap, here are the pros meh, and cons of the BenQ GW2790QT. Hi. So basically, my programmer cousins generally like the monitor until they saw the price tag of 1,499 ringgit. The thing is, a monitor made for work is not going to have any flashy or eye-catching features that will make you impulse buy it. People are so used to seeing 240 hertz, 360 hertz refresh rate with one millisecond response times because that's the loudest narrative in monitor marketing. But if you're a more discerning user that actually uses your monitor a lot and genuinely cares about your eyes, these monitors with their are more niche features could save you unnecessary eye discomfort in a long run. It's more a slow burn like Blade Runner or Ghost in the Shell and less dramatic like Star Wars or Avengers or Demon Slayer. Ultimately, it's your money so you decide. That's everything I have to say about this BenQ GW2790QT Pi. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and share. And like I said, check out the links in the description to support people who support us. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell to see more content like this. And follow us on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, again, my name is Bangsawan Shane, and I will see you in the next one.